I4 Technolab Private Limited, an ISO 9001 to 2015 certified and leading sustainable IT service provider. Presence Tutorial of Smart Contract Using Solidity. The purpose of this course is to give you complete understanding and hands of experience with smart contracting using Solidity for blockchain technology. In Chapter 13, ERC-20 covers an overview of ERC-20 and demystifies various ERC-20 jargons. We are going to discuss the following topics. What is ERC-20 token? Mandatory methods. Optional methods. Events. Writing an ERC-20 token in Solidity. Setting the number of ICO tokens. token. What is an ERC-20 token? In recent years, the ERC-20 token specification has become the de facto standard for Ethereum tokens. ERC-20 tokens are contracts that implement the ERC-20 standard. These contracts operate the balance and total supply of tokens including the methods used to transfer them which we will see in our next topic that is mandatory and optional methods. ERC stands for Ethereum Request for Comment. The number 20 is assigned to this request, hence the suffix. In other words, most Ethereum contracts out there today are ERC20 compliant. Before moving further, let's take a look at the ERC20 standard. What makes ERC20 tokens so attractive and successful? There are several factors in play. ERC20 tokens are successful and easy to deploy, as you will see in this tutorial. The ERC20 standard solves a significant problem, as blockchain-based marketplaces and crypto wallets need a single, standardized set of commands to communicate with the range of tokens they manage. This includes interaction rules between different tokens, as well as token purchase rules. It was the first popular specification to offer Ethereum token standardization. It was not by any means the first, but thanks to its popularity, it quickly became the industry standard. Just like other Ethereum tokens, ERC-20 tokens are implemented as smart contracts and executed on the Ethereum Virtual Machine EVM, in a decentralized manner. The ERC-20 standard defines a set of functions to be implemented by all ERC-20 tokens to allow integration with other contracts, wallets, or marketplaces. This set of functions is rather short and basic. ERC-20 and basic. ERC-20 functions allow an external user, say a crypto wallet app, to find out a user's balance and transfer funds from one user to another with proper authorization. Mandatory methods. Mandatory. Function total supply. Public view returns. UINT 256. Total supply. Required. ERC 20 contracts must provide a similar view function that returns the current number of outstanding tokens. Again, I will use a public variable because Solidity will create the corresponding public getter. Function balance of address token owner public view returns UINT balance of required ERC20 contracts maintain per account token balances which must be accessible via a public view function Once again Solidity makes this easy Function transfer address to UINT tokens public returns bool transfer required ERC20 tokens can be transferred directly from their owner's account to any other account with a public transfer function. This required transfer function includes some things demanded by the standard. Transfer requires that the sender owner has enough tokens to fulfill the tra transfer. It will not do a partial transfer. Successful transfers must log the appropriate transfer event. 
The transfer must return a bool value representing a successful transfer. Please note that the ERC20 token standard is actually silent on whether the transfer should reverse when msg.sender doesn't have sufficient tokens, or if it should simply return false. It must do one of the two. In this example, revert is followed as it seems like a safer choice. Function transfer from address from address to int tokens public returns bool transfer from required parameter from represents the address of the sender the parameter to represents the address of the recipient parameter tokens represent the amount of token to be transferred return tells whether the transfer was successful or not function approve address spender uint tokens public returns bool approve required the ERC20 delegation function, approve, can be quite short. It's msg.sender's account that is delegating a transfer, as can be seen in the adjustment to allowance. A sender can approve a delegated transfer that exceeds their actual token balance. Because the transfer wouldn't happen until transfer from is called, the check for the adequate balance is deferred until then. Therefore, all approvals can succeed, though all need. Even though all approvals can succeed, the function is still required to return true. Address function allowance, address token owner, address spender, public view returns, UINT. Allowance, required. Because separate transactions delegate token transfer approval and transfer those tokens, it's necessary to keep track of which accounts have delegated how much token authority to which other accounts. Fortunately, this can be done trivially with a nested mapping. Mapping address equals greater than mapping address equals greater than UINT 256 public allowance. The declaration includes a mapping within a mapping, which simply means that every address in the outer mapping will map to a distinct mapping, which will then map addresses to integers. It's easiest to think of this as a two-dimensional mapping, which maps pairs of addresses to integers. This notion is clearer when you see the getter that the Solidity compiler creates for this, twin clearer when you see to that the Solidity compiler creates for this. Function allowance, address owner, address spender. Public view returns, UINT 256 remaining. That's the function required by the ERC20 standard. Op Identify methods. Optional. Token name. Symbol. Name and symbol, optional. ERC20 token contracts may give their tokens a name and a symbol. Typically, the name is a short description of the token, and the symbol is a one-word identifier. To be compliant, the name and symbol must be accessible via view functions like function name, view returns, string name, function symbol, view returns, string symbol. To implement those, Solidity shorthand of simply defining public variables by the same name with the same type is used like, because Solidity will generate the corresponding getter automatically. String public name semicolon. String public symbol semicolon. Decimal up to 18. Fixed point math. Decimals optional. Neither the Ethereum virtual machine nor Solidity offer support for fixed point numbers, they only support various flavors of integers. This presents a challenge when a contract would like to present others with the idea of a fractional unit. To do this, it is necessary to simulate fixed point numbers explicitly. This kind of simulation is already done with Ether. When contracts pass around huge 256-bit integers to represent Ether transfers, those numbers don't directly represent Ether, they represent way. 1 Ether equals 1 and 18 times 0 way. This means that when a contract is given a UINT 256 value that represents a single Ether, it is not past the integer 1, it is past the integer 1 and 18 times 0. Many token contracts support fractional tokens, and they do so in precisely the same way by having a scaling factor. 
in ERC20 tokens, that scaling factor is denoted by the value of decimals, which indicates how many zeros are there to the right of the decimal point. The fixed point representation of a token. For instance, a contract that supports 1 by 1 hundreds of tokens, example, 3.14, 2.72, would have decimals equal to 2. If decimals equals 2, then the value stored to represent 3.14 would be 314. ERC20 contracts support this with the optional view public function, decimals. Again, a public variable suffices. UINT8 public decimals. Un Unlike the common use of 256 bit integers in Solidity programs, this only requires 8 bits because 8 bits worth of zeros is a lot of zeros. For this contract, the fixed point simulation requires only trivial additional code, which will appear below when the contract computes the total supply of tokens. We should note that it appears that the accepted norm is to use decimals equals 18. Account contract defines two specifically defined events. Example. These events will be invoked or omitted in situations like event approval when a user is granted rights to withdraw tokens from an account. Event transfer after the tokens is transferred. Approval event required. ERC20 requires an event to log the successful approval of a delegated token transfer, which logs the owner, the delegated spender, and the amount. Event approval address index owner, address index spender, UINT256 value. Just like the transfer event, the account addresses are indexed parameters to aid event consumers. Transfer event required. Events are the convenient method the EVM provides for logging information for external consumers. ERC20 contracts are required to publish contracts are required to publish events whenever token transfer attempts succeed. The transfer event publishes the from and to accounts as well as the token value transferred. Event transfer address indexed from address index to UINT256 value. Note that the form and to addresses are indexed to help event consumers efficiently monitor only those events they care about. Token C20 token in Solidity. Let's start with an example. First, we need to define two mapping objects. This is the Solidity notion for an associative or key value array. Mapping address equals greater than UINT 256 balances. Mapping address equals greater than mapping address equals greater than UINT 256 allowed. The expression mapping address equals greater than UINT 256 defines an associative array whose keys are of type address, a number used to denote account addresses, and whose values are of type UINT 256, a 256-bit integer typically used to store token balances. The first mapping object balances will hold the token balance of each owner account. The second mapping object allowed will include all of the account allowed will include all of the accounts approved to withdraw from a given account together with the withdrawal sum allowed for each. As you can see, the value field of the allowed mapping is by itself a mapping plotting account address to its approved withdrawal sum. These mappings together with all other contract fields will be stored in the blockchain and will be mined resulting in changes being propagated to all network user nodes. Blockchain storage is expensive and users of your contract will need to pay for, one way or another. Therefore you should always try to minimize storage size and rights into the blockchain. Now that we have the required data structures in place, we can start to write the ERC20 logic into the appropriate functions. ICO tokens. How do we set the number of ICO tokens? Well, there are several ways to set the maximum number of ICO tokens and this matter might be worth a lengthy discussion by itself. 
For the need of our ECR20 tutorial, we shall use the simplest approach, set the total amount of tokens at contract creation time and initially assign all of them to the contract owner, that is the account that deployed the smart contract. String name underscore semicolon. String symbol underscore semicolon. UINT8 decimals underscore semicolon. UINT 256 total supply underscore semicolon. Constructor, string name, string symbol, UINT 8 decimals, UINT 256 total, public. Name underscore equals name semicolon. Symbol underscore semicolon. Symbol underscore equals symbol semicolon. Decimals underscore equals decimals semicolon. Total supply underscore equals total semicolon. Balances msg dot sender equals underscore total supply semicolon. Closing curly bracket. A constructor is a special function automatically called by Ethereum right after the contract is deployed. It is typically used to initialize the token state using parameters passed by the contracts deploying a MSG is a global variable declared and populated by Ethereum itself. It contains important data for performing the contract. The field we are using here, MSG. Sender contains the Ethereum account executing the current contract function. Only the deploying account can enter a contract's constructor. When the contract is started up, this function allocates available tokens to the contract owner account. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next video.